must be home by nine. The power fell from heaven. God saved my soul. Got home about twelve and fell fine. Something got a hold of me. Praise God. Something got a hold of me. Went there to fight, but oh my, that night God certainly got a hold on me. About that time someone started to preach, and he looked right straight back at me. Told everybody how mean I was, he didn't talk like he thought much of me. But something got a hold of me, praise God. Something got a hold of me. I went there to fight, but oh my, that night God certainly got a hold of me. I went there to fight, but oh my, that night God certainly got a hold of me. Amen. I used to like to fight, but. <laughs> that Amen. Was, but now I love to sing gospel songs. I, I love to sing for my Lord and my Savior. Amen. <laughs> I, I, I used to like to fight. I used to run around this guy that could hold his own with anybody. And I, like, I like that. But now I, I like to sing songs for my Lord and my Savior. He's been so good to me. I keep watching for the dawning of tomorrow. When we'll meet our blessed Savior in the sky And all the troubles of today will then be over For God will wipe all teardrops from our eyes We're here today Yeah We'll be <clears throat> gone tomorrow That's right thinking a little bit there, you know. I don't know you ever do that when you're doing something. You get thinking about something else, you lose track of where you're at. Yeah. yeah. And we're getting ready for that final journey. And I am making plans to live in my new home. Soon those eastern skies will bloom with clouds of glory. And then the sounding of the trumpet We'll be gone, we're here today, we'll be gone tomorrow, Yeah. and this life won't even be a memory, we're here today, we'll be gone tomorrow, where we'll praise the Lord throughout eternity. Where we'll praise the Lord throughout eternity. Hey. Amen. Give him a good hand. <clears throat> Here today, gone tomorrow. Amen. We're going to take our offering up now. You can get really Billy Joe to play another song. We want to have a word of prayer here. Give as God has blessed you. We've got some folks in our church to learn how to be tithers. God loves a cheerful giver. You get saved, you ought to give in to, to the work of God. Uh, the Bible says the first fruits are His. Uh, that's a tithe. You make a hundred, you give ten. You make ten, you give one. Uh, you make a dollar, you give a penny. He came unto His own, but they received Him not. But as many as received Him, gave you them the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Wait a minute. I'm going to take offering first, but I'm going, to, I'm going to pray. I'm sorry. And you're going to play that song when we take the offering. Right. you got to forgive to Billy Joe. He's getting old. <laughs> Let's pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your precious. And thank you, Jesus. Pray for our people and thankful for those that are here. We pray there would be great decisions made for God today. Please, Lord, save that lost soul near as hell. Reclaim a backslider. Thank you. Touch Doris. She's not feeling well today. She's tired. 
bless her, Lord. Take close to her. Help us to give as we're able, Lord. God, God loves a cheerful giver. Meet our needs. Pay the bills. <clears throat> we thank you for it. Now bless our offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can I say something for us? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm not as versed on Bible scriptures as Brother Barbie does. He he retains a lot, but I some th some things I retain pretty good. Don't get the words exactly right, you know. But I know that one time uh, Jesus asked Peter, said, "Peter, lovest thou me?" And and back then, however the tone was, meant a whole lot what it meant. And, and and Peter told him, you know, how, how he thought he, who he thought he was, and and it didn't satisfy Jesus. He said, Peter, I say again, lovest thou me? And he said something again. I'm not sure exactly how well, that still didn't satisfy Jesus the way his tone was and everything. He said, Peter, I say unto you, lovest thou me? And Peter said, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what I think of those words. I just want to hit on my knees. Amen. And I can't understand why everybody's not up here on their knees right now praying to God to save them. But if I get on my knees back off of them real good, I'd be down right now. Well, I love the Lord with all amen. my heart. And I hope that I please Him when I sing these songs. Amen. He came into His own, but they received Him not. The word inside a body, a lamb without a spot. He tried and tried to tell them, he said, I am the way. They couldn't understand that he could say, I am the Son of God, I am the mind, I am the Good Shepherd. I know which are mine I am the light Yes And with you I will be And when they ask if he was Jesus He said I am he He is I am Yeah <coughs> he, he is, is I, I am Sing it with him He is I, I am, am. I am nothing without him. Now Moses on the mountain, he questioned God the same. Whom shall I say sent me? What is your name? The Father said, go tell them. I am sent you. You know that I'll be with you. And I'll show you what to do. He is I am. He is I am. He is I am. But I am nothing without you. He is the resurrection. Yes, he is. He is the way. He said, I'll be with you. He still is today. He is I am. He is I am. He is I am. But I am nothing without Him. Amen. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> Can you sing that dust on the Bible again? Can you find that page? Dust yeah, on the Bible. I know you haven't played that. You played it in the beginning, but I'd like to play it again. Dust on the Bible. Listen to this carefully. Joanne, we got dust on that grand piano. We got to get some dust off there today, okay? You know, beautiful big black grand piano gets dust easy. There's someone out there on Facebook, maybe you know how to play the piano. Come in here and play this grand piano for us. Maybe someone come to church today knows how. Anybody here know how to play the piano? You can play out, read notes from a book. We'd love to have a piano plus the guitar. It'd be wonderful. Ready? Yeah. I went into a home one day to see some friends of mine. Of all the books and magazines, not a Bible could I find. 
couldn't find a Bible. I asked them for a Bible when they brought it, what a shame. For the dust was covered over it, not a fingerprint was plain. Dust on the Bible, dust on the Holy Word, the word of all the prophets and the sayings of our Lord. Of all the other books you'll find, there's none salvation whole. Get the dust off the Bible and redeem your poor soul. Yeah, amen. Oh, do you get <coughs> your magazines of loving tragic things? But not one verse, Bible verse, not a scripture do you know. When it is the truth and its content's good for you. But the dust is covered over it, it will doom your poor soul. Dust on the Bible, dust on the Holy Word. The word of all the prophets and the sayings of my Lord. Of all the other books you'll find, there's none salvation hold. Get the dust off the Bible and redeem your poor soul. Get the dust off that Bible and redeem your poor soul. Yeah. Hey Amen. Give Billy Joe a good hand. Praise the Lord. We love his playing. We love his singing. It's a blessing. We're going to be in the 18th chapter of the book of Luke today. <clears throat> Can you bring me that microphone? Because I'm going to need it with my bad throat today. I got a cold. I get preaching too loud. My voice might blow out on me. So I'm going to use a microphone. I usually don't need to. Here you go. Okay. You're taking two minutes of cough drops now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give me a cough drop. I like to stick with the old paths. I got the King James Bible. And I've got the... Um, <clears throat> where do we put this thing? Hook it on my belt, I guess. Don't move around much, but I'll hook it on my it's belt. It's hard to get up when you're 81 years old. It's hard to get up. I'm using Luden's. Remember that? These are from way back. When I was a kid, I had Luden's cough drops. They got different kind now, but I still like the Luden's. Get one of these things on. Turn to your Bibles to Luke 18. I'll teach you something today from Luke 18. We've got so much fake Christianity and no Christianity at all. Huh. Cliff, you know I was praying for you last night. Got you here to church today, didn't I? Cliff, you hear me, man? Is that Cliff in the back row? No, it ain't. I'm sorry. You had your head down. You kind of look like Cl I couldn't see your face. Just seeing the, the, the bill of your hat is falling over your face. I'm sorry. One Cliff. Maybe Cliff will call me and I was praying for him last night. I haven't seen him lately. Several people here I see I've been praying for. Of the church. Hey, Amen. Luke 18. Verse 18, Luke 18. What page is that on in the Pew Bible? 1118. 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Someone trying to figure out how to go to heaven here, okay? Verse 19, And Jesus saith unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good save one, that is God. So he wanted, to, he wanted this particular person of authority uh, to admit that uh, Jesus was God. 
Because if, if you don't have the Jesus that's God, if you just have the Jesus that's a good man like the liberals, the liberals down in this corner and over on this corner and so on and so forth, they just said Jesus was a good man like Confucius yeah. or like Buddha. No, Jesus is God. Amen. And if you've got a Jesus that's not God, you don't have the Jesus of the Bible. You've got a false Jesus. And the Bible says in Galatians, they preach any other gospel to you or any other Jesus have nothing to do with them. Said it twice right in a row there. Book of Galatians. We go on. And he said, all these have I kept. Uh, he says, thou, verse 20, and thou knowest the commandments, Jesus speaking, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, all these have I kept from my youth up. He's a liar. No, nobody can keep them. He's a liar. Like I, I was, I read, I read a commentary on this. Um, he's the last night this morning. Matthew Henry. Matthew Henry has a good commentary. Uh, I like just kind of read the Bible, but I read commentaries once in a while. But uh, Matthew Henry made the comment uh, on uh, on this verse that uh, uh, if he was truly, if he truly believed Jesus was God and he was truly repentant. He did not like the other disciples, and, and he repented and got saved. But he was what? Uh, what, 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 did, what did that mean he was when he said uh, that he had kept all them commandments? That's called self-righteousness. We preached on it the other day in Luke when, when we had the Pharisee and the publican, remember? And the Pharisee came and said, I'm, I'm glad not I'm, I'm not like this publican, and I'm not like these and that claim to be better than others and that's what this that's what this uh, rich ruler was claiming and he says uh, I've kept from my youth verse 22 he said and when Jesus heard these things he said unto him yet lackest thou one thing sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me boy that's a mouthful Jesus said didn't he see Jesus called for total commitment a lot of you in church today, uh, you, you know nothing about total commitment. You, you've not committed totally at all. You're just uh, simply uh, uh, some kind of a church person. We've got them by the thousands. We've got them by the millions. But we've got uh, only a few that are total commitment. You know, in order to be saved, you have to be total commitment. It's not just a matter of being a baptized church member. I'm talking about total commitment. This is what this whole thing is about. And when he heard this, he was sor very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Yes. When Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Hard for a rich guy to get saved. Eh? That's what it says here. This ain't me talking, this is Jesus talking. For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye then for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, that's quite a thing. I mean, you know what a camel looks like, big old camel. You know what the eye of a needle looks like. It says he can't get through there. Of course, that's, I mean, that's, it's, it's such a difference. It's, it's almost like ridiculous, but it means like it's impossible. You know, that's what it says. And they that heard it said, who then can be saved? Jesus speaking, verse 27 the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Only way you can be saved is because God, the Lord Jesus Christ, dying for your sins, paying the penalty on the cross and raising from the grave. Verse 28, And Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Verse 29, And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man... Listen, here's the key verse now, verse 29. Pay close attention here. Brother, I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake. So it's saying that in, in many cases, it's very possible that you'd have to leave your loved ones or leave your home or leave your business or or you'd, you'd have to, to totally commit to the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, wait a minute. 
I, I never thought it was going to be anything like that. Well, then you've never considered the real cost of what it is to be a Christian. You, you, you haven't considered. You take it lightly. You want to get in and get to be a church member, maybe even get baptized and live like the world and, and um, not willing to give up family or house or job or, or anything. If you, get, if you get saved and you're a bartender, you quit being a bartender. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Well, yeah. verse 30, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time? Now, this is interesting. This verse is so interesting. Look at this little passage here. Verse 30, first half of it. Who shall not receive manifold more in this present time? That means right now. What does it mean manifold more? It means that you might have to leave your wife. You might have to leave your children. You might have to leave your brother, your sister. You might have to leave your riches. You might have to leave your business. You might not have to uh, quit the job you have. You might have to do it. But it says here, you'll receive as for following Christ. All of these people will read this. Says, I'm not going to give up my family. I'm not going to give. Up. I haven't. Not, let me just say something about your family now. I've got a cousin now, Zoltan Kekashe. He might be watching this today. He probably will watch. He watches my stuff. He's my cousin. He was uh, uh, the same, uh, uh, his mother and uh, my father were sister and brother. So he had the same grandpa I did, uh, Grandpa Varga. Well, he had, of course, her the, the the daughter's name changed to her maiden, maiden to her married name, Kekashe. Of course, he carried that name. <clears throat> but my brothers don't have anything to do with me. My sisters don't have anything to do with me. My relatives, nieces and nephews, and that I don't have uh, nothing to have anything to do with me. Is that because I choose that? No, I just chose Jesus. They chose to eliminate me from their fellowship. Because when I'd see him, I'd talk to him. My brother Philip, years ago, he he had a uh, he ran a uh, apple company. I don't know, made probably apple products and cider and whatever. It was in Washington, you know, they got all them nice apples in the state of Washington. And he was a manager at an apple plant there, and he was coming to Mil that's when I lived in Milwaukee. He was coming to a business meeting in Milwaukee. And he said, he called me and he said, I'd like to see you when I'm in Milwaukee. I said, I love that. He said, but you got to promise me something. You won't talk about Jesus. I said, I can't. I can't promise you I won't talk about Jesus. You're my brother. You're going to hell. You need to be saved. You mean you mean to tell me you told your brothers, your brothers and your sister they're going to hell because they're not? You better believe it. If I don't care about them, who's going to care about them? Or you're going to be a real nice brother and sister, father and mothers, or whatever. You'll be a real nice relative. And, and, and uh, uh, if your relative, listen, if your relatives go to hell, if you can communicate with them, their blood will be upon your hands. Their blood, Dr. John Rice always used to say, who's going to win your loved ones to Christ if you don't? Huh? Who'd have a better chance to get your brother or sister or mother or father or son or daughter or cousin or loved one that? Who would get them saved? We should. And if we don't, the separation comes naturally because Jesus said, I come not to bring peace but to bring a sword. That's what Jesus said in another portion of Scripture. I've come to set a husband against a wife. A brother against a sister, the son against his father and mother. He says, I, 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 he said, I've come not to bring peace, but to bring a sword. You see, the gospel of Jesus Christ is divisive. 
the, the gospel of Jesus Christ divides between heaven and hell. It's the difference between heaven and hell. The blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the resurrection. Oh, it's not, we got so much foolishness today and we've even got uh, the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church that says you don't even have to believe in God. All you have to do is be a good person and have a clear conscience. And The Bible says there's none good, no, not one. So how are you going to be a good person? It's impossible. You've got to come through the blood of Jesus Christ. And you don't sacrifice the blood every day, hundred of times a day like the Roman Catholic Church does. They're killing Jesus today right down the street at St. Paul's. They say that they sacrifice him every time they sacrifice the Mass. Roman Catholicism is a vampire religion. It's a vampire religion. They say they're drinking the blood of Christ. That ain't right. You see, I don't think you ought to talk that way about the Roman Catholic Church. I don't care what you think. If you don't want to talk about them, don't. I'll tell people the truth about the Roman Catholic Church. They're taking folks to hell by the millions and millions and millions. And by the way, Historically, the Roman Catholic Church have killed millions and millions and millions of true Christians that believed in the born-again experience. They used to burn them with the slow burn. They used to torture them and stretch them and pull their arms away from their body and, and everything, trying to say, recant. Bow to the Pope. Recant your, your, your faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, no. They couldn't do it. Yeah, it's going to cost you something. Folks in church here today and folks out there in Facebook, it's going to cost you something. Well, I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, nor parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, true Christianity, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time. I've got more. I've got more than I ever had with my, with my loved ones that are lost. I certainly wish my brothers and sisters would get saved. I wish my cousins would get saved. I wish any of my blood relatives would get saved. But you know what? I've received a lot more. I get to have you born again people that are here today as my brother and sister. I've got brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world. Praise God. It's a wonderful thing. And because that Jesus has brought a sword and he's chopped and he's made division... And he set a brother against a sister and so on and so forth. And our natural uh, uh, things that, that we would be uh, uh, following are destroyed because of the cross. Not only that, it says, Who shall not receive manifold more in this present time? <laughs> and in the world to come, life everlasting. See? So... I've got it now and I got it in the future. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I got it now, I got it in the future. He told us today rich folks can't get saved because they love money. Yeah. That's what it says. So, it says harder for a rich man to go to heaven than a than a camel to go through an eye of a needle. That's what it says. Yeah. You gotta give it up. I wish my brothers get saved. I pray for them. I call them. I text them. They don't pay attention. They don't respond. Because I can't put that. <laughs> Try that. It must be the metal on my glasses. But anyway, um, let go put it in there. All right, let's see if that works. Come on back to hell, devil. Try to quiet this thing down. You get here one way or another.
probably see how that works. who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, now in this age, in our life right now, we're going to receive all these blessings of being joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what I have today. Do I wish my brothers and sisters would talk to me and get saved? Yes, I do. But I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. See, some of you have sacrificed following Jesus Christ because of loved ones, blood relatives. You have. I run into people all the time that, that because of their loved ones, uh, they, 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 they just, they're not a good Christian. They'd rather go fishing with their brother on Sunday instead of going to church, their lost brother. Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. I don't know what, what your deal is. I don't drink with my loved ones. I don't smoke with them. I don't go to the bars with them. I don't go to the dirty movie shows with them. You say, you think them things, that's all, that's all wrong for, for a Christian. You should have, a Christian I had, uh, 25 years ago, Christians didn't have nothing to do with Hollywood. Now you got Christians, got the Hollywood movies coming in their uh, uh, screen on their television set, downloading them. We know nothing about Christianity today. That's why... Christianity is so sorry today and so weak. And in many cases, it isn't Christianity at all. And uh, Daytona Beach is going to hell in a handbasket fast. There's going to have to be some folks like you and I that will count the cost. Because if we'll separate by the gospel, we follow Christ. He separates the world from us, you understand. I don't have to go to my brother... Bless God, you're going to hell because you uh, you drink liquor or whatever the case. I don't I don't have to do that. I just have to stay away from it. And then God separates them. They don't have fellowship with me. No man that had left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake. That's the gospel's sake. But so much more. It says. In this present time, manifold more in this present time, and in the world to come, life eternal. I got joy here, unspeakable, and I got eternal life to come. No more tears, no more sorrow. Uh, sorrow. The former things are passed away. We taught, was it last Sunday? Might have been. I think we did. Lazarus. Died and went to heaven, and died. He's a rich man. Died and went to hell. I think it was last Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. And um, heaven or hell, what's it going to be? You see, I'm not going to feel at home on the, in this world anymore. I, I don't. I don't feel at home here. I'm not comfortable in worldly situations. I'm not comfortable at. At, at worldly parties. I'm just, I'm just not. I went to a worldly party yesterday, a birthday party. I wasn't comfortable. I just wasn't comfortable. I just wasn't comfortable. Well, there was no liquor there. They weren't drinking liquor. Who better than do that? But it was just, as I thought about it, it was just it was a world that was a world that was a world. It was toys and money and eating and and uh, just a worldly party. That's all it is. I think families ought to get together and have a prayer meeting. Amen. I like that. I yeah. Like that. No unified prayer. Ah. 
I'm the elder one there. I guess I should have brought something up. He could either boot me out the door or listen, one of the two, I guess. I told him Sunday school this morning, didn't give my testimony, should have given my testimony. There's people there that weren't saved. I should have gave my testimony. I said, folks, just get your attention a minute here. I just want to testify for Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. That's what I should have done. I didn't. Shame on me. Got to give a testimony. I had a chance. I missed it. Just went out of there leaving a nice birthday party and some cake in my stomach and a couple of hamburgers and a couple of chicken nuggets, some Fritos, a couple of glasses of water. But to see the kids hitting that thing up there and get the candy out of it. See? Well, not, well nothing real bad. But see, the world doesn't have to be real, real bad. We've got to honor Christ. Amen. Every area of, of, our, of our life. <laughs> I ain't going to go on the saying anymore, but I'll tell you what. For me to live is Christ. I don't feel at home in this world anymore. I don't. I don't. People ask me a lot of times, I'll be in a certain situation. They say, what's wrong? I say, nothing. But just, I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable like Grandpa Varga used to be. He was never around any kind of foolishness or that. He's reading it to Grandpa and Grandma. They're reading their Bible and praying. That's all they did. That's all they did. We're too comfortable, Christians. We're too worldly. We have too much. Yes, it's the land of opportunity. It's the land of opportunity. But let me just say this to you. With all of the opportunity. And, you, and if you work and, and you keep your nose to the grindstone, you can make money in America and you can have a good life. Many people have. They've come from other countries as, as uh, uh, what do they call them, refugee or whatever. <coughs> <coughs> My father <clears throat> came from Hungary, the land of opportunity, and he did well here. He made money and did well. But the money in America and what you can make here, sometimes it can really be a detriment to your Christianity, and it can keep you from being a Christian, period. Oh, there's a lot of people that are, that are doing well and that are church members, but they're not in a gospel church. They're not in a church where they're preaching the born-again experience. <clears throat> and they play church on Sunday and <clears throat> make their money on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And go to all the worldly things. But there's got to be something different. Amen. And that, that division causes us to leave house, parents, brother, wife, children for the kingdom of God's sake. And I repeat it again, who shall not receive manifold more in this prayer. Right now, I've got more because of Christ. Have you lost much? I lost a ton. Lost relatives, lost stuff. I had a guy offer me a job when I ran a mission in Milwaukee. He liked the way I did things. He said, I'll hire you. You could run one of my car dealerships. You make a lot more money than us. I ain't even interested. Don't interest me. No, money don't matter. Even my loved ones. 
Even my blood relatives, sad to say, have lost, have lost house, parents, brethren, wife, children, for the kingdom of God's sake, but shall not receive manifold more. I've got more. And I've got eternal life to come. Start living for God. This this life is so short. Amen. <clears throat> Pray for Doris. She's not feeling well today. She's 94 years old. She's ill today. She didn't sound good on the phone. God's, God's given her to us on extension here. We're only promised three score and ten, which is 70. She's 94. I don't know how long we'll have Doris yet. God keeps her around, I think, because she's such a blessing to folks, and she does so much for God. <clears throat> but Doris always says this. The young may die. The old must die. I was talking to an old man yesterday. And uh, I was talking to him about death. I told him he's getting too skinny. He said he lost 30, 40 miles. I said, don't lose too much weight. I says, uh, he's getting old. He's about my age, a couple years. I think he's 76. I'm 78. I said, don't get too skinny. You won't look good in the coffin. That's what I told him. Oh, my God, you thought I'd... Committed Harry Carey. I mean, people around me saying, "You can't say that. You can't. I can't say that. I'm gonna be dead soon. So is he. I'm gonna stay fat. So I look better in the coffin. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Don't All right. <laughs> You're gonna look real good in the coffin. <clears throat> you're gonna need a custom-made box, <laughs> but you're gonna look good. <laughs> You gotta look good in the coffin too, Billy. Sure. I thought, hey, Pastor, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> you too, Brad. <laughs> I'm looking at someone here in the first row too, and it ain't Gary. It's the guy in the other end. Name is Victor. The other Victor's skinny. This Victor's fat. You're gonna look better in the coffin than that Victor. How do you talk about looking in a coffin? It's just an old remains there. Don't worry about it. They lay me out. You see me in a, laying in a box here in front of this church. It probably should bring me in here and let you walk by me. They say pay your last respects. I ain't nothing but nothing there, really. I'll be in heaven. I'll be rejoicing. Amen. You got a question? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. Listen, if you don't have, Charlene, if you don't have money uh, to bury yourself, all you have to do is, is tell them or tell me. All you have to do is tell. You can tell Timmy right now. Say, oh, I have insurance. Oh, no, but anybody in here, if you, now, Christians bury their dead. Heathens burn their dead. Christians bury their dead and heathens burn their dead. Yeah. So if you're, and, and we have a lot of people that don't have money, don't have a lot of money, can't afford to bury their self, their loved ones can't bury them. All you got to do is tell me and just come up to me and tell me as your pastor. And, and, and when you die, I'll call them and say that they had told me their wishes is to be buried. And even, even if you have a pauper service that's provided by the county, they'll bury you if it's your wish. Now, they'll burn you because it's cheaper. I don't know how we got on all this. <laughs> Guess I started talking about how people looked in the coffin, huh? You know, a lot of relatives now. I know Christians now. Isn't it sad? They burn on their loved ones. I told my wife and kids, you better not burn me. Come back and haunt you. <laughs> Christians bury the, bury the dead. Heathens burn them. All kinds of Christians now uh, burn their get. Uh, 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 you know why Christians usually uh, burn uh, burn their loved ones when they die? They're cheapskates. Yeah, it costs more to bury them than burn them. So they burn them. Cheapskate, cheapskate, cheapskate. <laughs> Mom, dude. 
It shocks me. It shocks me. What are folks doing? Good afternoon. You're late, 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 late. Church is over. Here you come dragging in. Now, if you was new, I wouldn't ball you out. <clears throat> you know the score. You got to come on time. You miss all this preaching, man. Your girlfriend missed it, too. <clears throat> Better get right with God. I want the blessed Holy Spirit to, to work here today. Even for these two folks come in late, God can work. Amen. I can talk till I'm blue in the face. I can talk till I'm blue in the face, but unless God works in your heart, you can't get saved until the Holy Ghost talks to you. Amen. Can't get saved. Oh my, I pray for Holy Ghost power in our services. I prayed way into the night last night. I want God to do something here today. Is God's, I pray the Holy Spirit of God has touched you in some way that, that you can see your need to be saved. Or you can see your need to come back from backsliding. Oh Lord. If we don't have a Holy Ghost revival, we need Holy Ghost revival here in our church. We need Holy Ghost revival in our city. How is that we can be so complacent and so indifferent and so bent on living in sin? God help us. God needs to turn us today, folks. Let us not go out these doors as we did come in. Let us be changed. Let the lost to be saved. Let the backslider to repent and come back to God. Amen. Oh, God, do a work. Yes, Let us pray, Lord. God, oh, Lord. This your, <clears throat> this your deal. It's your service. Speak to hearts, Holy Ghost. Yes. Speak to people out on Facebook. Yes, Lord. Speak to those here in church. Yes, Call those that are lost unto salvation that they'd repent. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God yes. had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Yes. Amen. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. Out there in Facebook, you can be saved. You have no testimony here in church today. You have no testimony out there. You have no testimony. You need to be saved today. Would you take the gift? Would you pray the sinner's prayer today here in church? You know if you need to be saved or not. You know if you need to be saved out in Facebook. Would you repent and call upon the name of the Lord? This is the prayer. Pray it now. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day the best I know how with an honest heart I turn from my sins receive you as my Savior thank you for saving me right now you're here in church today our heads are bowed our eyes are closed please our heads are bowed our eyes are closed you say pastor I prayed that sinner's prayer, and I asked Jesus to save me today in a minute. Would you just slip your hand up, say, I did it today. I prayed the sinner's prayer. God bless you. God bless you. God bless these. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How about that there on Facebook? You say, 
I prayed that sinner's prayer. Let me know. Send me a message somehow. I don't know much about this Facebook, but there's a way to contact me if you're watching it. Oh, dear Lord, work in the hearts of these. Is there a backslider in the house? Is there a backslider out in the viewing audience? God's speaking to me, you say. You're here in church today, you say. God's speaking to me. Nobody looking around, just the pastor. God's speaking to you. God's speaking to me. Saying you need to repent as a Christian. You're not living right. There's things in your life that aren't right. And you need to, you need to get it right with God. Is that you? Raise your hand if that's you today. You need to get something right with God. Yeah, amen. Are there others? Yes. Are there? Yes. Are there others? Yes. Just slip your hand up. I need to get something right with God. It's flashing across your mind right now. I need to get it right with God. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for all these hands raised in church. Help us to search me, O God, and try me. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. 139th Psalm. Thank you, Lord, for it. Backslidden Christian, would you come to an old-fashioned altar? Would you come and bow your knee in an old-fashioned... <clears throat> you don't have to tell me what it is. No one has to know. Just yeah. get it right with God. Just slip out from your chair and do some business with God. Come on up front. Would you do it? Come on. Yeah, come on. Yes, that's right. Come on. Get it right. There's just something about coming forward and getting something right with God. Yes, you come. Amen. Amen. Others need to come. Amen. Just come now. Let's get some things right with God. Would you come? Anyone else? Would you come? Would you come? Out in Facebook, would you yes. bow a knee? confess your sins as a Christian oh and say the Bible says in 1 John 1 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness oh Lord we need to confess think about it dear one maybe you won't come maybe you want to some have come but you're back in your seat confess your sin to Christ, ask for forgiveness. Claim his shed blood upon you. Claim fellowship again with him. Get back in his presence. See, my presence is fullness of joy. At that right hand, pleasures forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the food you provided for us. Bless now as we fellowship together. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, dear ones that have come forward. God bless you. God bless you. And that's wonderful. That's wonderful. We're going to have prayer meeting tonight at 5, church at 6. Facebook going to say goodbye. We'll be on here tonight. Watch us a little after 6. Send us to someone. Come in in person if you can tonight.